snowmaking a game-changing ski industry innovation and its controversial environmental impacts. It's no secret that ski resorts across the globe are turning to artificial snowmaking as the primary adaptation to a climate change influenced future. With global temperatures slated to rise anywhere from 2 to 9.7 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century, the livelihood of the ski industry lies in the hands of none other than Mother Nature. And as an increasing amount of alpine precipitation falls as rain, and winter droughts become more common, artificial snowmaking has stood out as the best solution. But what is snowmaking? Let's start with the invention of the snow gun. First implemented at Mohawk Mountain in Connecticut with a simple garden hose and air compressor, snow cannons today typically take two forms. The first is referred to as a stick gun, which resembles a lamp pole with nozzles at the end. On the other hand, fan guns take the shape of a jet engine with a central fan surrounded with nozzles. In both designs, pressurized air and water are blasted out of small nozzles, which causes ice crystals to nucleate in the air and fall to the ground as snow. Today, snowmaking has come to serve as a necessity at New England resorts and is even being used to supplement natural snowfall in the Rockies and snow abundant Cascades. This is Greg Gleason. He runs Killington's snowmaking operations in Vermont. You can't rely on natural snow alone. I mean, some years we get 250 inches, some years we get 150. So yeah, we, we're uh, really good insurance. This idea of insurance is the exact reason why snowmaking is such an appealing investment for ski resorts. During years of low snowfall, snowmaking technology allows resorts to generate a reliable snowpack for their customers, which guarantees a surface for skiers and snowboarders to ride on. Accordingly, over 90% of U.S. ski areas have some level of snowmaking at their disposal. Now, if this simple process of creating man-made snow seems too good to be true, that's because it is. Ironically, in order to offset the results of a warming climate, the ski industry actually further contributes to climate change. Researchers at the Swiss Federal Institute for Snow and Avalanche Research, Mountain Research and Development, and environmentalists at Aspen Ski Company, among others, have all confirmed that snowmaking is a highly water-intensive, energy-consuming, and wildlife-harming practice. Despite these environmentally undesirable side effects, Artificial snowmaking is an adaptation that will keep the sport of skiing alive as it pumps life into an activity which is being threatened by climate change. At the end of the day, it is crucial that snowmaking is both embraced as a viable solution and invested in so as to make the technology more energy efficient, water saving, and economically available to a wide range of resorts. There's a little of, a, of, um, of irony in the fact that resorts have to, you know, spend electricity in order to protect themselves from global warming. Every day, large amounts of electricity are used to power snowmaking cannons. At older systems in the West and across the majority of East Coast operations, resorts rely on centralized air compressing facilities and pump houses that push water and compressed air up the mountain to serve their snow guns. While stick guns need pump house and air compressing infrastructure, most modern fan guns only rely on a pump house and an onboard electric compressor. In both systems, these pump houses rely on diesel compressors, an energy source which produces high quantities of carbon emissions. And even the electricity used in fan guns has to be sourced from somewhere. According to a 2019 report by the U.S. Energy Information Administration, 80% of domestic energy production was from fossil fuels. In a world where the increasingly visible effects of climate change will raise global temperatures, flood cities, and kill hundreds of thousands each year, the emissions tied to snowmaking make it a questionable endeavor. Another criticism of snowmaking is its intensive water use, which reduces spring runoff and can displace fish and other aquatic life in nearby streams. From coast to coast, resorts depend on a steady flow of water from November through February, the length of the typical snowmaking season. During this three-month period, 
resorts tap into adjacent streams and bodies of water, pumping the liquid across the expansive mountain terrain to feed snowmakers. To put this in perspective, claims Paul Tilly, a researcher for the Tulane University Law School, most ski area operations are capable of converting over 2,000 gallons of water into snow in around one minute. And despite heavy water regulations, not all river water finds its way back home. One of the last things that snowmaking really needs to figure out is how to minimize evaporation because that's the one bit of water loss. When you make snow and you're throwing those, you know, those water particles up into the air, some of them are going to float away and those do end up in another drainage. With all this water extraction comes a threat to fish and wildlife. As streams are diverted, already low water levels drop further and can freeze over. When this happens, fish perish and elk are unable to drink from alpine rivers. Therefore, if resorts are causing streams to dip below ecologically safe levels, thus endangering wildlife, it would seem unjust to continue the crude practice of snowmaking. While snowmaking is very resource intensive, the technology has come a long way and is rapidly becoming more efficient, environmentally favorable, and better understood by the ski industry. According to Auden Schendler, the Vice President of Sustainability at Aspen Ski Company, snowmaking technology has become much more efficient. Whereas preliminary snow guns might draw 96 kilowatts of power, says Schendler, new ones only draw 4 kilowatts. With this reduced energy demand, modern ski resorts expend less energy to make the same amount of snow, which cuts down on the overall emissions tied to power generation. In the same light, some resorts are taking it a step further. Mike Nathan of Arapaho Basin's sustainability team explains this concept. We, we partner with Excel Energy on one particularly big solar project that they own and that completely powers our snowmaking systems. This simple shift in power source means that over time, resorts have been able to divert from the environmentally undesirable impacts of snowmaking, thus producing snow with reduced ecological cost. In addition, advances in snowmaking technology allow resorts to withstand even substantial fluctuations in temperature. Technoalpin, a premier manufacturer of snow machines, claims that their state-of-the-art snow guns can operate at up to 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit, prevailing even in warm conditions. So, despite the threat of warmer winters, the trajectory of snowmaking development indicates that resorts will be able to employ snowmaking as a long-term, increasingly efficient, environmentally sound solution. It's absolutely essential. There would be no ski resorts in West Virginia if it weren't for snowmaking. That's Ken Gator, the Vice President of Mountain Operations at Snowshoe West Virginia. Though most ski resorts aren't as reliant on snowmaking as Snowshoe, the technology serves the same purpose at varying extents across the U.S. At Crystal Mountain in Washington, Frank DeBerry explains his take on it. You know, it's certainly not critical to our being able to be open, but it creates a more consistent surface for us to have to worry less about, you know, throughout the year. In our warming climate, regardless of location, snowmaking availability has become something of an insurance policy, says Aspen's Auden Schendler. In other words, snowmaking guarantees an opening day for ski resorts. And along with that comes a stable income for ski area employees along with local shops and businesses. At the end of the day, snowmaking is what will keep skiers carving down the side of the mountain they love, whether for sport or simply a passion for the beautiful alpine wilderness. The ski industry is one of the first to be impacted by climate change. With snowmaking's high energy and water demands, putting more resources into its development might not seem important. However, its progress would only pave the way for the many other climate adaptations that will aid humankind as increasing temperatures, rising sea levels, and more severe natural disasters ravage the planet.